I'm Owen Bigland. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, it's Saturday. Let's do a, a little blog here on investing. I like to veer off sometimes on Saturdays and talk a little bit more about retirement savings and investing your money in ETFs and in the stock market and that kind of thing. So I had a lot of people reach out to me. They wanted to know my opinion on uh, GameStop, uh, GameStop and uh, you know the short seller trades and everything else, Robinhood. So I'll just brush on it a little bit. First off, I should point out right now, I really love the whole idea of Robinhood. The commission-free trading, there's a number of these uh, sites now in the States. I mean, even Schwab now, I think is doing free trades or $1.99 per trade. I don't know if this is ever gonna come to Canada. I hope so. But you know, you can you know sign up for TD Waterhouse or RBC Direct. You're gonna pay $9.99 a trade, which is still incredibly cheap. It's not as good as free, but you know, just to put it in perspective, when I first started investing, uh, this is over 30 years ago. Listen, there was no internet, there was no online trading or anything. How you did it is they would give you a book with some quotes in there, a quarterly book, and then you would look in the paper, the newspaper for the end of the day prices, you would actually have to phone it into the brokerage. And back then, I can tell you, in my early days, I was paying, I was with, at that time, Nesbitt Burns, I believe, was the brokerage, that's so long ago. I was paying $100 per trade. $100 per trade, and that hurt because I was a young investor and I wasn't buying $10,000 worth of stock. I was buying $1,500 if I could. I, you had to build it up because if you're buying $1,000 worth of stock and had to pay $100, that's a 10% commission you're paying. So you had to build up a little bit of money there before you wanted to buy anything. Then, you know, TD Waterhouse came along, and this is again before the internet. They had a telemax system where, you know, you you would phone it in, and the trade started to go down in price. But I remember in the early days of the TD Waterhouse, I think I was paying thirty nine or forty nine dollars a trade. Crazy when you look at it today. And then finally, it got down to nine ninety nine. And now, as I've told people, when you build a big enough portfolio like I've got, I kind of play these brokerages off, and they usually will give me. 20, 30, 40, 50 free trades a year. And I don't trade in and out of stock. So generally that will last me for a year, so I don't pay anything. But I do love these commission-free uh, brokerages now because it's empowering young investors to take control of your finances. And that's what I've been pounding home for years on my blog, what I talk about it in my book. You've got to do this stuff yourself. Don't rely on stockbrokers or financial planners. Don't be buying these expensive managed mutual funds. Either index invest through low cost ETFs like Vanguard, and then if you want and you've got the interest in it, you can start buying some good quality individual stocks, especially when the commissions are next to nothing now. But you know, as far as these short selling squeeze, short squeezes and buying companies like GameStop or AMC, you know, listen, there were some young kids that made a lot of money on that, and I'm incredibly happy for them. But listen, be very careful here. This isn't investing. This is speculating. And a lot of these guys, they were putting all their money into these things. You know, if you want to speculate with what I call a little bit of mad money, you know, maybe in your TFSA, and you've got a good foundation already in place where you've got some ETFs and you've got some Apples and some Home Depots and some TD Bank, you bought the S&P 500 or the triple Q. And if you want to play with a little mad money and trade in and out, by all means do it, especially with these commission-free sites where you don't have to pay the friction costs on it. But be very careful with these. It's not really investing. It's just straight up speculating here. So be, be careful with that. But the other thing I wanted to talk about here, and this goes back to trading in and out. You know, Part of what really spurred a lot of this day trading on was COVID. A lot of people kind of lost their jobs. They got some stimulus money from the government. So they opened up online brokerage accounts and started day trading. And you know, it's worked out for a few people, but keep in mind, it's probably less than 1% that ever make money in this. You're, you're eventually gonna get your head handed to you day trading like this. You just are. And the Wall Street Journal, um, did an article, uh, had an article, and they had a bunch of these on these young guys that are trading on Robin Hood and everything else. But this one was a couple weeks ago, what Robin Hood traders need to know about taxes. And it talked about how a lot of these guys dealing in Robin Hood, of course, you cannot 
trade the Robinhood is only in cash accounts. You cannot put your Roth IRA into this, which is a sheltered account. It has to be in an unregistered fund. So any capital gains or trading uh, uh, gains you're making on this is fully taxable. And a lot of these young Robinhood traders are totally green to all this. They don't even know. So it talked about how some of these day traders have been doing this since COVID, you know, just got hit with 100, 200 page tax documents from Robinhood with all their trades in and out. And how, you know, gee, I didn't know I had to pay taxes on this. And now I'm going to, I used to file my taxes on my own, but now I'm going to have to pay $500 for an accountant to go through this and help me file my taxes. But the other articles I've read is how so many of these people are trading, just trading in circles. They're just spending all this time and just, if they're lucky, the few that are, are eking out very little return. And it talked about how most of these guys that are in front of a computer for eight hours a day, buying this, selling that, inching up, inching down, and most of them are slowly losing money, or the few that are making money, after you add up the time, you know, they're not even making minimum wage. It had a story of a guy here that's been uh, trading for the last six months coming out of COVID. He lost his job. He sits at a computer, took a couple of online trading classes, He's trading eight hours a day for the last six months, and he's managed for 2020 uh, to eke out a, a return of $8,000. So the guy running the article basically did the math, eight hours a day, five days a week, plus he's doing some stuff on the weekends, research. You know, it turns out, you know, he's making about $1.50 an hour. And that's what trading does. You'd be so much better off just buying and holding the indexes or buying and holding good quality dividend paying companies and then just sitting on your hands and then spending that eight hours a day day trading working on your career or going to school. I mean, that's what I do. You know, I make a very good living as a working realtor. I would never be able to make anywhere near the money trading as I would as a working realtor. So why bother? And as a matter of fact, by just buying and holding, I'm going to probably blow away the returns that most of these guys are getting by trading eight hours a day. <clears throat> and it's that, like the story I've told you guys many times <clears throat> about managed mutual funds and hedge fund guys and, and a lot of these traders. 90% of them cannot beat the index every year. Here they are trading in and out, sitting at a terminal eight hours a day, and 90% of them can't even beat the S&P 500. And of the 10% or 15% that do, they just barely eke out, a, 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 they just barely uh, beat it. And they can't do it consistently. Maybe they get lucky for a year, or maybe two, but eventually they will fall behind the index. So why spend all that time? Just buy the indexes, buy the triple Q, buy the VIG, buy the S&P 500, buy the Canadian XEI or XIC. They're all going to pay you a nice dividend. Just reinvest the dividends as you go. And then spend all that time trading here. Spend that in areas that you can make some money in. So remember that. I mean, these guys are just kind of trading around in circles. But I am a big fan of commission-free trading, and I, and I definitely like the way it's going about people taking control of their investments. You know, so many people, there's been a, some very good documentaries, one on P, uh, PBS many years ago about pensions and how, you know, a lot of these U.S. Uh, companies, are, these employees are in these terrible pension plans where you're in managed mutual funds that are charging them 2 3%. In some cases, they can't get opt out of these. In some cases, they can. And if you can, you should. And take control of it yourself. Stop paying these 2 and 3% MERs and just buy the S&P 500 or the VIG and maybe buy some individual stock and just sit on it. That can have a, be the difference between having a million five in your RRS or in your retirement fund uh, to having 600 grand. It's incredible what you lose with these expenses. I'm Old Big Win. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you next week.